Hi everyone. Otis says hi too. So as promised to my Royal Gems Tupperware mates last night, I'm going to bake a quinoa chocolate cake. I discovered this cake because one of my friends just found out they were severely gluten intolerant. So we wanted to make something she could eat at parties. Um, but it's since become my go-to chocolate cake because it is literally the most tasty chocolate cake I have ever made. Otis is going to stop barking in a minute. It's just somebody's walking by. And in these pandemic times, Otis is a little bored just like we all are. <laughs> so anyway, the main ingredient for the quinoa gluten-free chocolate cake is quinoa. Now, I don't know how many of you guys use this. It's just this little, um, they, call, they call it a grain, but it's actually really a seed. It's super high in protein. And you can get a couple of different kinds. You can get white quinoa, red quinoa, or mixed quinoa. And to me, they all taste the same and they all work the same in different recipes. Okay, so this was just, trust me, my hands are clean. We all obsessively wash our hands right now. This is just two cups of cooked quinoa. And um, quinoa is cooked, just a sec, I just need my thing. Quinoa is cooked just like rice is. You put in one measure of quinoa to double measures of water, salt the water a little bit, and then put it on the boil. Once it's boiling, turn it down and cook it for about 20 minutes. Stir it up and make sure it's nice and fluffy when you're done. Now, I, if you haven't bought quinoa before, this is what it looks like when you buy it. It's little. You see it puffs up quite a bit once it's cooked. Um, it'll also stick to everything. It's super staticky, so if you spill it, it's gonna be so much fun. If you, <laughs> that's why I have mom because she finds it everywhere. I clean up the macro, she cleans up the micro. <laughs> um, if you buy quinoa and you haven't bought it before, please make sure the bag says pre-rinsed. Quinoa has quite a strong odor. And if you don't buy the pre-rinsed, you need to put it in a strainer and rinse it really well because the odor will translate to a flavor when you cook it. Uh, the pre-rinsed will still have a bit of an odor when you open the bag, but it won't impart that kind of a taste. Now, because I'm sort of a spur of the moment cook, when I cook quinoa, I cook a double batch and then I put it into two cup measures in my freezer mates. You can see there's one left here. I separate them with a layer of paper, wax paper, parchment paper, put them in the freezer mate, freeze them up. And then when I wanna cook or eat quinoa for dinner, like it's great instead of rice, it's ready to go. And I don't have to think too hard or plan too much. So into our food processor goes two heaping cups of cooked and cooled quinoa, four eggs. I just did this because I couldn't stand the pressure of cracking eggs in front of an audience. <laughs> a third a cup of milk, which I transferred into a bigger cup because I was just spilling it everywhere when I was walking around the kitchen. Um, vanilla, I'm so terrible, I never measure vanilla but there's nothing wrong with measuring it, about a teaspoon-ish. And then melted butter or margarine, whatever you use, three quarters of a cup. Don't worry, I will post this recipe at the end. Now, I love these micro um, pitchers. They are microwave safe. It's a one cup measure and a two cup measure. But if you're melting something in the microwave, the one cup fits on like a lid and you don't get butter splatters everywhere. So it's amazing. I love to use it for this, for popcorn, for everything. But what I'm gonna do first is um, mush this all together because what you wanna do is process the quinoa quite a bit. And just make it more, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? We'll lip read. Yeah, <laughs> you just wanna make it nice and smooth so that you don't taste chunks of quinoa. And that's why we use the food processor or a blender because you can't do that manually. It just doesn't have enough power. You don't have enough power to do it. Once we have that going, we are going to add one and a half cups of sugar. And don't, you know, push all about the sugar chocolate cake tastes good and it tastes good for several reasons. One of them is sugar, one of them is butter, one of them is using decent cocoa. And, and swell red 
Uh, measuring cups. And swell red measuring cups. <laughs> Absolutely. We do love our Tupperware measuring cups. And we love our Tupperware measuring spoons because you can pre-fill them and they sit flat on the counter and don't tip. And we also love our modular mates because they keep everything fresh. Now, you guys are gonna be absolutely shocked that you use, because most of the time when you make a chocolate cake or something, you use um, probably what, a quarter cup of cocoa or something like that, Mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. I know, and every yep. time I make this, sorry, I have to take off my glasses, I can't read with them on. Um, every time I make this, people think, oh my God, how do you put that much cocoa? It's gonna be bitter. No, it's not. So you see that, half cup of cocoa, but, that's not all. You use another half cup of cocoa. Whoops. And so it's a whole cup of cocoa in there. Don't cut it short. Don't. Do, do not panic. I can attest yes. it's a wonderful chocolate cake. It's amazing. You want to put in some salt and half teaspoon of salt. So Tupperware spice containers are great because they have the shaker portion but they also have the portion that opens so you can put your measuring spoon in. So you're not having to take off seals or anything like that. And we use one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half teaspoon of baking soda. So I have a question for you guys. Do you guys have a box of baking soda in your baking cabinet? If you do, I want you to think about this. When you put baking soda in your fridge, you put it in there to absorb all those yucky odors, right? So if you put it in your cabinet to use for baking without having it in some sort of an airtight container, what do you think it's doing in there? What do Absor you think? Right? Absorbing sneaky odors. Right? So, and then you're going to put that in your baking and you want your baking to taste good. So just think about that and i want you to then after you've thought about it immediately go and transfer your baking powder and your baking soda into airtight containers so that they aren't absorbing all that yucky stuff and your baking is beautiful and fresh and tasty okay we are just going to take this earplugs ready <laughs> of course it's a little quieter now that there's dry stuff in there too. Okay, so basically that's it. I'm just gonna use a spatula and scrape down the sides and give it one more mix. We're gonna pour it into the cake pan. We're gonna put it in the oven at 350 for about 45 minutes. And then we're gonna come back and show you how awesome it is. Okay, I hope you guys really enjoy this because it is a fabulous cake. Bye.